Today I want to talk to you about what is central life in existence for? What is the vision of our church? I love to return to this subject because vision drifts and it leaks out and you have to get refocused at times. And I want to talk to you about the reality that we have been brought into a commissioning ourselves as a whole, all of, all of those who put their faith in Jesus, to duplicate, to model, to share the gospel. Jesus said it to us in the book of Matthew, go and make disciples. He had given his life. He had been buried in a grave. He rose from the dead and he gathered that group of friends and he said, from this day forward, you have a new mission. Your mission is to go and tell this story and to go live it out and to make disciples of many nations. And here we are, the extension of that. If you got the faith to believe it, you are a living extension thousands of years later of what Jesus began in that moment. And I'm, I just want you to know, I, I personally am grateful for it. There isn't a mission, a dream, a thought in my life that I've ever come up with that was better than the one that God designed for me. And I only learned that when I began to walk with him and cooperate in it. Anybody testify to that? I just, I know that the vision that God has for our life is the most important thing he has for us. And he's not lacking vision for our lives. In fact, at Central Life, we say it to you this way, like we don't need to come up with our own vision. We don't need to envision a church. God already envisioned a church. He envisioned us in this moment right here. He envisioned your life. And if we'll pay attention to that, we recognize it and we'll see it. I want to take you to one scripture that kind of drives that point home uh, strongly today. It's from the book of Proverbs. Look with me on the screen. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Some of you know this. I put it in the message version up here. That's a paraphrase. This is a very, I mean, I'll let me tell you this. Every translation that I've read of the scriptures and every paraphrase I've read of this verse, they're all awesome. <laughs> you can move translation to translation and paraphrase to paraphrase. It never loses. It never loses its punch. This is an awesome verse. Here's, here's what it says here in the message. If people can't see, in other words, if there's no vision, they can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. You ever been in a season of life like that? You ever, ever been in a situation going, I'm not sure what God wants for me. I can't really see it. If you ever been like, if, like me, if you ever been in a moment like that and you look back, and then you recognize, yeah, stumbling would be a great, great kind of uh, descriptor of what that season looked like. When you can't see what God's doing. The King James Version says, where there is no vision, people perish. Where, when you can't see what's God is, what God is doing, you'll stumble all over yourself. But when they attend, that is when you see what God is actually doing, doing and you see what he's calling you to and you begin to live within that and you begin to attend to that vision to attend to what he reveals they are most blessed if you really want to know what a blessed life is all about then open God's word see the vision that he's outlined and walk within that vision you'll come to a point where you say you know what Oh, it's a blessed life. That's what God created. That's what he outlined for me. That's what he envisioned for me. And so I want to talk to you about this vision today. We say it this way at Central Life. We, we put some of our own language on it, but we say we exist in light of what God has revealed. We exist to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus. If you had to force me to explain why does Central Life Church exist that is my one sentence summary for you. We exist to lead people. I might even add a little bit to it in this way, to lead as many people as we can into a growing relationship with Jesus. That's our goal. Our goal is to say, how can we not only get you to a place where you see a, a picture of Jesus, you see the biblical picture of who he is, you get a revelation from God of who his son is, we want you to see that. I believe if you'll see who Jesus is, you won't deny him, you'll move towards him. And when you do, we wanna help you step by step grow 
in your relationship with him. So today I want to I say that's what we do. How are we doing so far? Makes sense? Nobody's confused yet? It's clear? Simple? You know, complexity, I've noticed in my own life, when you don't make things simple, when you make things complex, have you ever noticed, maybe like me, that it breeds a little bit of apathy in your life? Like, for example, have you ever had so much to do, you just didn't do anything because you didn't know where to start? Right? Can I just tell you something? I know that for some of you who begin to open God's word for the first time, it seems a little complicated, but the longer you're in it, the more you realize how simple it actually is. God is not trying to trick people, confuse people, make things overcomplicated. No, he's very, very clear about what his desire is. His desire is to be in relationship with you. He's made it real simple. And so we try to keep it simple on purpose with great reason because we believe that simplicity actually breeds initiative and it breeds excellence and it helps us understand like we're called to do a few simple things. And we've been, we've been privileged to connect and to network with some amazing churches over the last several years. We're part of a network and family of churches that just really have kind of a kinship. It's not denominational. It's not anything like that. But man, we've worked together. And, and you know what we recognize? God's given lots of churches across our country the same heart and the same how-to. But I will tell you this, how we go about church is quite unique. It is quite different. It's not like what you've experienced in the past. And a little bit about today is kind of just to, to clear some of that up, to help some of you who are new to the family at Central Life, some of you who are new to a multi-site church. I mean, that, I mean how weird is that? You know, we're one church, but we're, we got three locations and we're, we intend to add more. And what, how does that even work? Well, there's a how to all this what we're doing. And I want it to be really really clear today. And as we kind of step into that though, God gave me this verse to kind of be the theme for what I'm trying to communicate to you today. It comes from the Apostle Paul writing to a church like us in 2 Corinthians 6. And in verse 2, he says this, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. What does that mean? What is he referencing? He's talking to a church like us and he's saying, hey, don't live in the when and then syndrome. If you've been called together as a body, get after it. Unify your hearts and get to work. Now is the day. Now's the day. And you know, I, I feel like it's part of my responsibility to make sure that everybody understands at Central Life how do I connect? How do I become a part of this family? How do I understand in the real practical sense what I need to do next? Because you know what? Some of you are here, but that's it. You're just here. You're just here. And that's okay. Like you can sit there and be here as long as you need to. But I'll tell you, my, my ultimate goal, if you want to know, does this pastor have an agenda? Yes, they all have an agenda, by the way. <laughs> and my agenda is to get you living an active faith. That's my goal. I want you to be living an active faith. I don't want you to associate walking into a church and sitting and being an audience as being the church. I want you to live your faith out. And so we've organized to a certain point, to a certain level that's very simple. And I'm going to outline it for you today. But it's open-ended. It's like, it's just a unifying point for us so that God can then, you know how I describe it? We're gonna be organized to a point that the organism of the body of Christ can live. But we're not gonna over-organize. And I can, just ask my wife, I can over-organize <laughs> real fast. I'm real good at it. And uh, I'm that kind of guy. Like I'll drive you nuts with how organized things can get. Anybody, anybody relate to that? Like, you're like, which side of it? Are you, you know, it's not real clear about it. Like, I know how to organize, but I want to organize to a point as a church, the how to, so that God, the Holy Spirit of God can lead us into all truth and to lead you in everyday life and active and living faith. So there's four things I want, want, want to give you today that I actually left blank in this folder that's near you. On every other seat was a folder that said on the front growth track. We have something at Central Life Church called the growth track. 
And the next time it goes live across this campus, and it's a little different at each location, is in the month of July. But I'm going to kind of get you going today. I'm taking a church service to kind of get you moving on it. In that booklet that I gave you is actually step one of the growth track. There's three more steps. If you want the rest, come to growth track in July. But today, my, my goal is to kind of get you kick-started on the first one. And I'm going to give you an outlet at the end. Like we got a bunch of cold drinks and we bought a bunch of fresh baked Publix cookies because that's what you eat before you have lunch, you know? So those are gonna be everywhere just to slow you down and to help you connect with some people and they'll be, Pastor Marcus will tell you about who's out there and who to connect with. We want you to connect today. We want you to end this moment together by just being, being relationally connected and learning where, what does God have for me next? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you four, four things to fill in in your book. All the rest is already filled in. If you go to page five and six, I want to give you four statements to fill in. And we just kind of rallied around th these four things, these biblical principles. There's four of them that we rally around that are our how to accomplish our what. Does that make sense? All right. First one's this. They're going to be all four on the screen. Know God. We want to help people know God. How are we going to accomplish leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus, you got to hear the message of the Bible, which is an invitation to be in relationship with God. I want you to grow in your knowledge of God and his word, but I want you to know something. God makes an emphasis out of the relational piece and says, I want to know you intimately. I don't want you to just know about me, God says. I want you to know me in intimate relationship. How many of you are grateful you're not serving a God who's out there in the cosmos being distant and being ambiguous, but instead you serve a God who came near by coming into our mess? Anybody grateful for that today? God showed up in our world and said, I'll put on skin and bone and I'll walk the life you walk so that you know, you know what I'm calling you can be done. What I'm calling you to could be done. So God wants you to know him, and that's an invitation. By the, and I'll give you two invites today. One is to echo the invitation of God. It wasn't my invite to give. It's just my invite to echo to you. God says, I want to be in relationship with you. And you do that by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior who paid for your sin and will bring you home to the heart of the Father. I want you to know that invitation. You don't need to join a church to have that, accept that invitation. You don't even need me. <laughs> he, you, it's between you and God. He created you. He destined you. He invited you into relationship. But the second invite is beyond that invitation is that I would say to you, I have an invitation to you. I want you to be a part of this church. I want you to be a part of this church because we're trying to lead as many people as we can into a growing relationship with Jesus. And I need, I, I, I would just confess this to you. Like I need more than me to accomplish that. I need more than a church staff to accomplish that. I, I, need, I need more. And, and I, I want you to know something. I need you. There's something in this church for me like there's something for you. I'm not just here to deliver something. I'm here to receive something with you. And, and so my second invitation to you today is, is personal, which is why don't you join this family? Why don't you become a part? Why don't you listen to this how today? And, and so here's how I'll package it for you. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Let me give you a second thing to fill in on your paper there. Find freedom. Once you know God, you're in relationship with God, you need to be set free from the sin that once dominated your life. So here's how I like to, to actually describe that. Many people know the story of the Israelites leaving Exodus and, and being set free from the Egyptians, right? They were in slavery 400 years. Moses came in as a new leader, helped set them free. They got out of Egypt in one day. One day, that's all it took. A little over a million people exited. When I, you know the story, the Red Sea, that was wild, you know? But then 40 years, they lived in the wilderness. 40 years after that, they lived in the wilderness. You know why? Because Egypt, Egypt came with them in their heart. And there was some work God had to do four decades long to remove. It was indicated the very first moment that Moses went up on a mountain. They began to worship the old idols from Egypt when, when Moses departed. Why? Egypt was in their heart. You know what? 
Some of you reach a point where you're ready to give your life to God and when you do, what you'll find out is there's actually some work to be done now where God delivers you and sets you free from the sin that once dominated your life. And that's an ongoing process for some of us and, and, uh, and, and we deal with stuff all the time that's related to that. We're getting rid of the Egypt in our hearts. The, thir- the third thing is, is that we wanna help you discover your purpose. God has destined a purpose for your life. We want you to know it. In fact, I don't really believe that you can fully embrace your purpose until you've been set free from the sin that dominated you and until you're walking in relationship with God. Like there's an order to it. The Bible's very clear about that. God wants you in relationship, set free, and then sends you into a redeemed life with a new purpose and a new plan. And and the last, the ultimate thing is that God wants you to make a difference with this life. There's some things that matter in this life and there's some things that don't matter in this life. And God wants you connected to the things that matter. God wants you connected to the things that actually have an eternal impact. Now, that's a, I, that's a short summary. We, get, we dig into a lot of that in our growth track. And, and I'll encourage you, there's some things in the book already filled in for you. You can kind of read through that. What you're not gonna get is my, my explanation along the way. But, but there's enough there for you to begin to process. What I wanna do today is say, it, it, no matter how long you've been here at Central Life, and no matter how long you've been walking with God, I wanna just confidently, as I possibly can tell you, you have some more steps to take in your faith. You know that? You have not reached a point where you're like, I think I'm good. If you think you're good, if you think you're good, I love you and I want to kindly knock you off center today and say, time to take your next step with God. Now, I can outline some things, but there's a personal side to your relationship with God that is between you and him. And I wanna do my best to kinda, kinda nudge you today, kindly push you in a certain direction, but I don't want it to end here. I want it to end with you and God working it out. Sound like a good deal? So I wanna nudge you. I'll, I'll give you a little story that maybe help, help bring you to where, where I'm at with this. I was looking for beach cruisers recently. I wanted to buy some beach cruisers because my wife and I, we live at the beach and, I don't, and we live nowhere near mountains. I don't know why there's two mountain bikes sitting in my garage. I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> I wanna to go to the beach with a cup holder and a cold drink and ride through the sand. Anybody, wouldn't that be a great day? And it just like, let's just start, let's, you know, start the morning that way. So I'm looking for beach cruisers. I get on Craigslist because I'm like, surely there's some used beach cruisers that could, could use some more riding. Their days aren't done yet. So I'm looking around and I find these two beach cruisers and the, and the, and the guy, the ad says, he says, these are $50 firm. I thought, that's interesting because, I mean, usually people don't get real firm about a bicycle. You know what I mean? Like, and there's some negotiation or whatever. And then I noticed down below that before he actually gives his contact information and he says, and no tire kickers. I thought, this guy's mad. He's mad about something. Somebody just came there and tried to give him five bucks and just offended him. And, and he thinks his beach cruiser are worth more than that. And I thought, you know, and I was just laughing. I just thought, I'm, I'm probably, I'm not going to call that, that one. I'm going to find another one. So anyway, um, I was thinking about that though. And I thought, I thought to myself, you know what? Sometimes we just need that kind of nudge, don't we? Like quit playing games. If you want the bikes, buy the bikes and let's move on in life, right? <laughs> so I would just say to you, Hey, if you want in, get in. If you don't, you don't have to leave. But, 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 <laughs> but you know what? Some, somebody, I'm not going to give you the, the, the negative push. I'm just going to give you the positive push. If you want in, get in. If you want to experience more with God, get in. If you, but, but you got to decide. Are you called to this? And I mean, are you called to this house, to this place? Because we got work to do. We're not here to play church today. We're here to be the church today. And there's gotta be some organization to that. And then we gotta, we gotta, it's gotta set us free to go make a difference in this world. Do you agree with me? So maybe today, maybe today is your now day. It's not a win and then situation. Well, when, when I get to this point, then I'm gonna, you know. It's like, you ever do that in your life? Like when I get married one day, then I, I will, you know. 
If that's kind of your mindset, you can go back and listen to Swipe Right, by the way, because there might be some helpful things in there for you if you're in the win and then syndrome, all right? Some of you, <laughs> when I have kids one day, then I, right? Have you ever played that game? It's like, and for all the people with kids, they're like, and when our kids graduate and move on, then we will, you know? There's a, like, don't live in that space. Like, when I get the promotion one day, then I will. No, 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 now. Like, I just want to kindly nudge you today. Go, now's the day. And what is God calling you today in this moment? Don't undervalue this moment. Don't undervalue this day because you're not promised another one. What is God calling you to now? I want you to be active in faith. Maybe, I'm giving you four things. They coincide with those four statements that I gave you. I'll give you four things to think about. And I got, gave you lots of paper to do lots of writing today. So grab a pen and write these things down. Number one, here we go. Four things I want you to think about, okay? Maybe today is the day. Maybe today's the day. Would you go to number one? To commit my whole life to God. That first invitation I talked about. Maybe today is the day that you decide I'm gonna surrender my life to God. You know what? There's some miserable people who believe in God. And as I've walked with them and as I've listened as a pastor, you know what I've recognized? Some of the most miserable Christians are people who gave their life to God. They didn't give their whole life to God. They got in with one foot, not two. They got in with half their heart, but not the whole heart. Some of us are living in a space where we think, where, do you know that there's a, a whole passage of scripture recorded that Jesus had this conversation? And it's, it actually is a little bit scary. It's the book of Matthew. And, and Jesus actually says, he says, you know, that there'll be a day that, that the end of life comes on earth and we move into eternity. And some people will say, we knew you. We knew you, God. And he'll have to look at them. God says, uh, God will look at them and actually say, you didn't know me. You, you were, you, but we did a lot of Christian things. Like we, we help people, we serve people, help. And, and he said, no, 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 you, you didn't give me your whole life. One of the things you got to recognize about Christianity is it is a full surrender of your life. Your dreams, your goals, your plans, your initiatives get submitted to and surrendered to God. The beautiful thing is, is that God often has a way of bringing some of your dreams to life in a way you couldn't even imagine them being, being lived out. But the reality is we surrender our whole life. If you don't, you, you, I can tell you this, you won't find him. You won't find what he has for you. In the book of Jeremiah, there's a beautiful promise. You know it, Jeremiah 29, 11. There's a few verses that follow it. The, the verse in 11 actually says like, I know the plans I have for you. God is saying, I've, I'm, I've envisioned what I have in your destiny. Plans to prosper you, give you hope, those types of things. And it's beautiful, it's, it's a good picture. And then he, he couples it with this. In verse 13 and 14, he says, but... But know this, if you'll look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. There's a whole heart surrender that has to take place. And some of you may be a little bit miserable trying to find your way. Maybe today's the day that you, you recognize, I'm not sure I have actually fully surrendered my life to God. I'm not sure I actually have fully surrendered yet. Today might be your day. To give your life fully, surrender. I actually put that word on it, surrender. Would you look at this line? i summarize it this way. Surrender the control of my life to Jesus. That might be your step today. And like I said, it's between you and him. It's a prayer that says, God, I, I'm, I'm surrendering control. There's a, there's a statement in the United States Navy that is, if you fall overboard, you must participate in your own rescue. How's that for drowning at sea? Start swimming, right? You know what that looks like? I bring that up because you know what? You'll never save yourself, but if you want the salvation of God, you'll have to surrender yourself. Being involved in your own rescue looks like surrendering control and saying, God, I'm in, I'm in. And you know, the second thing is really fun. It's when you go public. The second part of that in action is when you go public with your relationship to God in something called baptism. And that happens on the second Sunday, second weekend of every single month across Central Life. And you know what? Whoever's ready to go public, 
Second week of the month, we baptize them. And it's awesome. Somewhere across Central Life, every second month, uh, every second Sunday of the month, somebody is going public with their faith. And it's awesome. And maybe you're there. Here's the second thing. Maybe it's not that. Maybe you're already there and you're past that. Maybe your step is this, to surround yourself, to surround myself with the right relationships. Can I just tell you, there's a forecast over your life right now that kind of shows what's on the horizon. And you know what that forecast is? Who you've given influence into your life. Who you have actually decided to allow to shape your life relationally. Who your closest friends are is telling a story of where your life is going. You better get in the right circle. Some of you need to get out of one today. And you're like, I'm not sure if I know. Ask the person sitting next to you. Actually, maybe not. Maybe they'll say, no, you're not allowed to get out of this relationship. You know, <laughs> but like, here's the reality. Here's, here's a reality check for all of us. Like, you're not gonna walk with a bunch of fools and become wise. The Bible even says it that way. If you don't like, if you're offended how I just said that, you go, you call my friends fools? No, the Bible says this. Look at this, Proverbs, book of Proverbs chapter 13. Walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. Better get in the right circle. We do something at Central Life called life groups. In life group, it's a small group. In your life group, you're gonna encourage each other. You're gonna pray for each other. You're gonna share God's word together. You're gonna help each other take your next step. That's what constitutes being in a group and life and relationship with a, with a group of friends who've got their hearts centered on Jesus. That's what it looks like. You know what? We're not a church that has a life group or a small group program. We're a bunch of groups, a bunch of life groups that make up a church. Let me tell you, you say, how, how does that work? Well, I'll just tell you by example. Five months ago, we planted a new campus in Satellite Beach, Florida. It meets on Saturday nights. We have a little over 100 people attending that campus now after five months. Before we opened the doors on that campus and began meeting there weekly as a church, we had five life groups already meeting from Pineda Causeway to 192. There were already 50 people doing life together before a church actually opened. Now, a lot of them were coming here to this location and a lot of them have shifted over to that campus. My point is, is that you gotta get in a group where you do life that's centered on Jesus, where it's encouraging and it's uplifting and there's accountability and there's support and there's prayer and there's somebody saying to you, what is God calling you to next in your life? What is God saying to you in this season? You need that in your life. You just do, you know what, you know you you really need is people who will not abandon you when your life falls apart. Like you're good. And, and if your life has never fallen apart to the point where you don't really feel like you needed people, all, all I can tell you is by the grace of God, hopefully you will never experience that. But you can still be the person next to the person who's experiencing that. Come on, you're not that far away from brokenness, are you? In my own life group this past week, we had a family. The husband in that family, his sister took, his, took her own life. Do you know who, who's supported that family? The life group. Many others, but I mean, you're just gonna need it. You're gonna need it. There's a, there's a gentleman named Simon Sinek. He's an amazing author on the topic of leadership. He's not a Christian man or a Christian author, but he studies and researches leadership in a variety of contexts. And he was, he was interviewing uh, some military leaders who oversee the Navy SEAL process and, and the, uh, really what they do with guys who come in to join that team or those SEAL teams. And he asked the question, like, what, can you characterize the type of person who actually makes it? And they, and they, in summary here, I'll just tell you what he said. Yes, we can. It's not who you think it is. It's always who you would pick last by visually looking at them. And it's not the strongest guys. 
They said, we got some guys who come in and they intimidate everybody and they're, they're, they haven't even made the team yet. They just look like they're an elite warrior. Said so those guys don't typically make it. And we have a lot of college athletes, a lot of division one athletes leave college and they go into the military and they attempt to become part of SEAL team. They said, those guys are strong, but man, they have not been tested in every capacity. They've been tested by strength a lot, but not the other things. They said, you know who, who makes it? They said, the guys who make the SEAL teams are the ones when they've exhausted all their strength and they seemingly have no more emotional energy left somehow find the ability to turn to the person next to them in that moment and help them. I think it's just a great picture. You wouldn't need some people like that because there might be a day when your strength is gone and you're gonna have to borrow it from someone else. You get in. Maybe today's the day that you commit. You stop fooling around with the wrong people and thinking that life is gonna change and you realize I, there are some hard decisions I gotta make and I gotta be together. If, if you wanna be in a group, we offer group life on two very large extended semester terms in the school year. Summer, we actually take a break. But um, at all of our campuses, we're gonna, in July, we hold, we're gonna hold these dinner parties for those of you who are interested in starting a group. And I just encourage you, maybe your action step is not just join one, maybe it's starting one. We'd love to talk to you more about that, all right? Third thing is, maybe today is not necessarily about those first two, but maybe, maybe today you need to do this. Discover my God-given purpose. Maybe today you don't need to just keep going through the motions. You don't need to just keep working and paying the bills. Maybe, maybe there's more. Maybe there's something more. I don't want to try to define what that looks like for every person in this room, but I will show you what God's word says about your divine purpose. Look at this with me. Psalm, the book of Psalms, chapter 139 says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Would you believe that God had already envisioned you, saw your life, written it out, and designed a purpose for your life? So you're like, trust me, pastor, he did not write this story. <laughs> he, did not, he did not write the story. Well, maybe not every single line of your story was written by God, but God did, de did decide what your divine purpose would become. God, God saw you and he wrote, you know, here's how I would describe it. If you feel that way, some of you have been reluctant and you've held back from actually stepping up and being confident enough to say, I think God wants me to fill in the blank. Like there's something there. You've maybe even felt the nudging of the Holy Spirit saying, you, got, you need to explore this. You need to discover this. You need to pursue what God has for you beyond just survival. And maybe you've lacked the confidence because you feel like you've just blown it too far. Hey, what I can tell you is this. Just let me give you an analogy, all right? Miami, it's about three hours south of us, right? Anybody ever been to Miami, by the way? It's great. It's got a lot of cool stuff down there. A lot of, Miami's a great spot. If it ever gets too cold in central Florida, go there. It's, it just gets a little bit warmer. It's nice. You know, it's, it's, it's about three hours drive. If we left here right now, we could be there, obviously, clearly before the dinner hour. And you could also get to Miami if you first, instead of going south, drove to Tampa. Now, some of you go, not doing that. Of course not. Why would you choose to do it? Like, I'm not going to go to Miami by going through Tampa from here, right? But let me just tell you something. It's still possible, is it not? You can still get to Miami by heading west to Tampa and then eventually south. You might have taken a path that God didn't outline for you, but he still knows the way to get you back on route end up where he designed for you to end up. God is that good. He's just that good at it. Some of you would go, I'm just not convinced of it. I'm just, so I put two verses in this point, all right? Just to, every other point got one verse. This one gets two, just because I feel like I want to push on this one, okay? Some of you are not impressed by that. That's all right. Okay, here we go. Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works with 
which God prepared in advance. This is the same thing said to you in Psalm 139. God has already thought this through. He has got an open invitation for you to cooperate with him. I'm telling you, if you can trust him for your salvation and an eternity in heaven with him and escape the hell that you've experienced on the earth and a even more eternal hell in the future, then you can trust him with the route and the detour and the reconnection to where he wants you to be. It's it's striking to me when I read these scriptures, I realize that before there was a me, there was a thing for me to do. Before God put me here on this earth, he had already planned something for me to do. It says it to me right there in the scripture. That's a powerful thought for me that says, you know what? I'm not, I'm not letting any grass grow under my feet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna find what God's purpose for me is. And for you, like as a church, can I just tell you, some of this is a, might be a little hard to understand in one moment and one 35 minute period of time. But I'll just tell you this, like, Get involved by, help, by helping, help yourself by going through the growth track that we outlined. It is not a comprehensive start here, end here, you're done. It is an open-ended invitation to get your life moving in an active faith. It is not, it is not, we did not produce something that if you'll go through that, then you've checked all the boxes and you're done with discipleship. No, 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 we just, this is how we unite and organize ourselves. We want you to know what that looks like so that we can move forward collectively. Make sense? So commit to it, get involved. It'll happen right here in July. We'll tell you more about it. The last one's this and we'll close with it. Number four. Maybe today is the day to live my life doing something that matters. Doing something that matters. What do I mean by that? Well, I think we just need a heavy dose of reality. I want to show it to you from God's word, Psalm chapter 90, verse 12. And it's really my prayer. Like, I, can I just be real honest and care with you as a pastor? Like, I feel the same burdens you feel, the same sadness you feel, the same joy that you have in certain moments. Like, I'm with you in this. I'm praying this prayer over my life every single day. And here's what it is. God, teach me to number my days and recognize how few they are. Help us, help me, God, to spend them as we should. I want you to see a connection between these these two statements, these two sentences. In order to understand and recognize how few they are and how to best use them, (laughs) there's something implied here. It's called help. You need help to recognize that they're short and they're few and how to use them best and how to use them in a way that matters and counts. I need God's voice to speak into my life to live the story and the journey that he's mapped out for me. And can I just tell you as as your pastor, I'm desperate for that voice right now. I wanna hear God speak. I've heard him speak in my life in the past, but I'm not done hearing from God. I want to hear his voice more and I want to trust his voice and I want to hear the confidence that he has as God and I want to hear the confidence that he has in me and I want to hear the confidence he has in us. There is more to accomplish for his glory and for his name. And my action step for all of us is would you just live this journey? I don't know. You know what? You could explain it another way if you want, and you could come and tell me, Pastor, I'm not sure if you, you know, we're, if you, we've got it all figured out. Duh. We do not have it all figured out. Okay. So don't just, just save, save yourself in that and, and having that conversation. Like, there is more to understand and accomplish, but here's what I know I'm going to start moving with what I do know. And here's why, here's why. Really the pressing thing that's on my heart and wanting to communicate this with you instead of move right into a new series is that um, there is, I think there's more that God's poured into my heart than I even feel like is possible to accomplish. I don't know if you've ever felt that way, but there's just more that I look at my life and go, oh my goodness, I don't know how to actually get all that done. And maybe, maybe, here's, let me just be honest with you. Maybe that's by design. <laughs> maybe that's so that God could say, 
you're going to need me. Maybe it's because there's some things he wants me to start that he's going to call other people to finish. Maybe it's that. And you know what? I don't know. I honestly, I just stand before you and say, I don't know. I, I don't understand at all. But what, what I do know is, what I do know is, I got some stuff to accomplish. You got some stuff to accomplish. Why would we not link arms to do that together and to live a life that matters? And I think about three things that really matter today that I wanna leave you with. And the first is this, God matters. I hope the fire and the passion in your heart never goes out, that God is worthy for you to, you could, stand, you could stop and stand still the, every single moment for the rest of your life and just stand there and just start talking and start singing and start praising and start telling God how great he is 24 seven and never stop. And it would never reach the point of enough. He's that worthy. But you know what? He didn't call us to do that. He didn't call us to stop and stand still and do that. He called us to be a living sacrifice that moved on into every area and every context and every circle of influence in our life. And to do that by not just loving him, but by loving other people because people matter too. And he said, people matter so much, I'll give my life for it. I'll give my, my perfect son to bleed out on a cross for it. People matter can I just tell you the people who are not like you, that you've drawn a line and built a wall about and say, I don't associate with those people. They don't need influence in your life. They do need to be loved by you. People matter. People matter. You never know. You never know when it's your last day, somebody else's last day. People matter. And God gave his very own son to die for people. And you know why? Because ultimately eternity matters. Those are the three things I think matter more than anything else. God, people, and eternity. And I'm living my life through that filter right now and saying, God, lead me, show me, teach me how to use all of them, all, all of that to the best of my ability. Teach me how to use all the days that you give me for the greatest return for eternity for eternity. It's why we show up here. It's why we sing. It's why we declare things that the rest of the world doesn't declare about who God is. It's why we give of our energy and our time and our dollars. It's why, it's why we commit in ways that others seemingly don't think is a significant way to commit. We, eternity matters. And, and this life is the closest that people should ever have to get to hell. And I just tell you, God will have his way. I would like for him to have his way with my cooperation, not without it. I want to be a part of his way. So here's what I'm going to do for you today. I'm going to make this real simple. I tried to. I hope it's not too confusing to you. I hope I've said some things that maybe the, the, the Lord and the Holy Spirit can use in your life. And I want you to, everybody, pick up this card right here. Because I said there's two invitations. One invitation is for you to begin a relationship with Jesus. And can I just say, I'm not going to say anything else about that other than if you want to be in a relationship with Jesus, step forward and, and, and begin to declare it. Tell God, tell him, God, I need you. I need a relationship with you. I need you. I need a relationship with you. I believe he'll forgive you of your sin. I believe that he'll bring new life. You'll be born again in the spirit. And I believe that he'll give you purpose that becomes clear and he'll help you take your next step. But you gotta declare that. God, I need that with you. The second thing is, um, I'd like to connect and be a part of this. Some of you, I just, my heart's desire is, don't kick the tires anymore. Come be a part. Like, don't just be the one who comes and I attend here. Like, like that's not what, the ultimate goal of this body is. This body is to participate here. And so I just want to encourage you with that. And our, our, our campus teams and pastors have actually designed for you to fill out that little card right there and say, you know what? I voluntarily and with initiative say, I want to be a part of this. And you know what? Sometimes I just put it on a card instead of trying to make you raise your hand or or just put it on a card and say, if you want that, you fill that out. Afterwards, when you leave, there'll be stations and tables that correspond with numbers and things that'd be so obvious to you. Pastor Marnus will guide you in it after I'm done praying. But the reality is like, we want you to connect and be a part of this family. And so 
I hope I've said some things today that might help you take that step forward, whatever God's calling you to. Would you stand to your feet with me? Let's bow together. Let's ask God to speak and then uh, and we'll be dismissed. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for the way that you've rescued us from sin, given us a new hope, given us a new future, given us more than anything, we're grateful for the new position that you've given us. You have moved us uh, uh, being enemies of you into now sons and daughters. What a privilege it is to be adopted into your family, God. We love you. We worship you today. We commit our lives to you. We surrender control. I pray that in this very moment, there wouldn't be a single person at Central Life Church gathered in our auditoriums and in our campuses. There wouldn't be a single person right now that isn't feeling the nudge from your Holy Spirit in the direction that you want us to move. God, I pray that you would show every person in this room how faithful you are, how that you're alive in the details of their life, how you're looking over them in this moment because you envisioned this moment before they ever arrived on this planet. And I pray, God, that a new level of peace would now begin to fall on this church family, begin to fill our hearts, and would give us new clarity for the days that you have before us. We love you. We commit our lives to you in the name of Jesus, the only name worthy of worship. It's in his name we pray. Amen.